This is a novel set at Grand Central Station, time after time. It is a time travel novel. This is the inside of the clock in front of the building. Stained glass. There's a little door on the six there and part of the story, the character Joe gets a tour of the uh, clock and there's a little door that opens it there and they can go out on the platform to take care of the clock. He's offered that, but he's scared. Hello, readers. So, Foregone Books has gone to enormous expense to go on location today in New York City at Grand Central Station to talk about Lisa Grunwald's really good novel, Time After Time. Time after time, he keeps I tell insisting on singing because he used to be a singer. So lucky to be living in New York. He also yeah, is it, uh, amazed that he lives in books went City. to enormous expense to come up here. Still I think the innocent uh, Ohio Senior fare on the subway is what? Trying to play the New York sophisticate. Now? Anyway, here I am. And Lisa Grimwald's book. How did I come to read this book? Well, I have a Facebook account, it turns out. A lot of people do. So I was uh, looking at Facebook one day, and uh, a famous photo was photo put up on one of the New York pages the, uh, of uh, the lights streaming in the windows, the not these windows, video, but the, the windows bottom. on the sides the light streaming into the windows of Grand Central Station. This beam of light from the, what, four or five windows along uh, the east and, and west sides. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful image of something that no longer occurs. And in the comments about this, somebody recommended the book that it was about Grand Central Station and about the lights and about the uh, Manhattan Henge where the lights come down, the sun during certain parts of the year sets directly uh, along the uh, street lines of uh, the grid of New York City. So you see the, um, the streets, the sun set, like if you're standing in 42nd Street, you see the sun set in the west or the opposite and you know this happens a, a couple times a year it's like really cool i have, I have some, some photos yeah, of that somewhere that maybe i can post along with this if i feel like digging them up they're not any more special at any rate i thought hey i think i'll read that book i like to read books so turns out it was available at the library and i ran right up and got it what goes on in the book it's a uh, you know, I was a little dubious because I don't think I give a lot of spoilers. I found out it was a ghost story, about and uh, I'm like, um, a book's I'm really not a down with anyway. ghost stories. Ghosts, ghosts are not particularly scary to me or interesting. Well, I don't believe in ghosts. But wait, hold it just a minute with your frivolity about the spirit world. Look closely at this very photo of the light coming through the windows. Look at the floor. Look at the spirits on the floor, the ghostly images. Film was not that fast back then. And there's no flash used here. But the thing is, Lisa Grunwald, with this book, really manages to pull it off and really pulled me into the, the whole thing uh, of this uh, ghost basically like from a subway nice. accident that occurs in the bottom of Grand Central Station in uh, the 20s. Boring, otherwise. So I recommend the book. It's a good book. 
it's very uh, romantic. Um, I, uh, I I was a little concerned about the romance part too because oh, no. well, I've had romances. Oh no! And it turns out I've had heartbreak Don't talk from about romances, this stuff, please. And I had a it's heartbreak boring. from a romance not that long ago. So it's not human connection. It's why. And I haven't been reading these uh, romance novels lately, but. Uh, I went ahead and read this one, and uh, I, I loved it. <laughs> I read it very quickly. Uh, it's about Joe and Nora. Joe is a working class dude who works in Grand Central Station. And lives in Queens with his Polish family. As a switcher, uh, where you manually had to change the train tracks. You get, you get the prompt from somewhere on a board. They live in a tunnel somewhere off the station. Tower. And uh, back in the day, I don't know what goes on now, but uh, <clears throat> this is, you know, in the and 30s it's hot where in there. this part of the novel. The time, there's time travel, you have to time be after time. You throw it's, these levers to change there, the It tracks. starts out, um, you know, there's parts of the, the wreck happens in the 20s, and then there's the 30s and the 40s, and uh, I think that's all of it. She spends a lot of time during the war. That was interesting as well because uh, you know there's a lot of the big one. a lot of material about the, the the we're all in this together war effort of World War II and the, the, uh, all the, the things that went togetherness on in of the our uh, patriotism, station. like a little choir all the, all somewhere, the countries do it. Uh, like a uh, war section or where soldiers or could come and, uh, or all together. and uh, have a, like a lounge, you know, and hang out and talk to people and Hollywood uh, relax. That uh, kind of thing. All these, you know, wonderful things that were connected to the connectedness of what World War II was. It's, it's kind of a shame that wars, only wars, tend to really bring us together, I guess. Humans like anyway. Wars. Don't be such a crank. So um, otherwise they wouldn't do it all the time. Joe, the worker, runs into this young woman, and she's beautiful, and she's young, and she has uh, clothes from the twenties. She's and on here the floor we are in the, the main room in the Grand Central. So it a romance builds out of these two people, um, a love affair. And it all just really works. Part of it that doesn't, that didn't really, uh, that I, you know, I, I, you have to suspend disbelief on these things a little bit. And, and one of the things that I did have to suspend disbelief uh, on was that um, somehow Joe was connected to the uh, Belmore Hotel enough that he could hook up with rooms in the hotel for free that they could stay in. But, you know, we have to give Lisa Grimwald, uh, Grinwald a little bit of, uh, you know, leeway. It's, it's a great novel, and it's not easy to write a novel. As if you ever tried. I haven't tried, but maybe yeah. I will one day if I live long You're enough. You're too lazy and so, insecure. Um, I like the working right class, now, anyway. rich girl elements of the book, because uh, Nora who is, well, the ghost, is a rich girl. She's from Turtle Bay. And actually, I worked in Turtle Bay, so I know a little about Turtle Bay, like 20 years ago or so. It's a series of I worked townhouses. as a renovation crew on these townhouses. Oh, and Turtle Bay was indeed a posh, and still is, a little posh a big couple of streets down, them. what, 48th Connect Street or something? Down that away. East and um, the people who lived at Turtle Bay at the time I was working there, and one of which I would see go out to her car rather frequently, was an elderly actress who uh, would come and go, and her name was Catherine Hepburn. So Catherine we Hepburn didn't lived see on a that lot street, of stars and, can't know and uh, down. Her, one of her neighbors was uh, Stephen Sondheim, 
So both of them are not there anymore, but uh, that's I think where the Lone live. Ranger came. So that's the setting for place. where she lives. So it's a, it's a. Uh, it wasn't played. Well, no, there's a little bit of a class uh, exchange there between Nora and working class Joe. I'm a little obsessed with class. Ultimately, this whole setup of their romance is impossible, and. Uh, well, it's impossible because A, she is not going to be getting any older and he's going to be getting a lot older. Now, part of this kind of resonated with me personally, as oh I said, God. I've yes, been in a, in a romance. You already know, so Liddy, I'm sorry. Everything's good. My man is out here doing a good deed. He's coming to you front and forward. So don't think about it for one second that this man is not a good man. This man is an excellent man. You know what I mean, I've seen him a couple times. He's a great man. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, man. <laughs> Thank you for that unsolicited, unsolicited testimonial. New York City, baby. <clears throat> yeah, that went well. I don't At know any who rate, he was, but okay. He, Joe and Nora, have this. Uh, age difference, this class difference, uh, and ultimately what goes on is that it, it can't work, of course, and somebody has to sacrifice themselves for the other. So Nora and works well, in a, uh, she's an artist. This so is a person that there's, a uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit personally there was an art about school my feelings about this. In Grand Central Station called well, uh, Grand a, Central uh, Art School. And uh, being an art model, I heard about this place only recently because it is actually is in Brooklyn now, uh, no longer in Grand Central Station, but um, in the 40s and 30s it was, and so part of the story is set there, which was kind of interesting since I happened to be peripherally in the field. You know, all these other issues that showed up, so I thought about this woman a lot in reading the novel oh, he's still going and about, on about that this. romance so when you read the novel it might kick up feelings of uh, a lost love because uh, yeah, it is dude. ultimately a lost but love you're but the it's only not one with a, a lost sad, love, sad, aren't sad you? story it, it's a it's a pretty happy ending really of a, of a very interesting and very and very uh, exciting uh, historical novel, quite well r read, r well written, and uh, you know I really liked it. So I would say you really can't go wrong if you want to read a novel about New York City. Time after time, I tell Library myself book. that I'm so lucky to be loving you so lucky to be the one you run to see in the evening when the day is through julie stein oh, yeah and, you're supposed uh, to like and subscribe they get more of this stuff uh, good luck Sammy Khan, yeah. Actually, she reprints the words in here to uh, Julie Stein's author. song. And the, the uh, Cindy Lauper. Which is a great song to not sing. Because it's really a great production. It a recording. Time after time. Not that much to so sing I in it. So I shot some stuff inside, and I guess I'll show that. And maybe add some commentary to that and basically that's it uh, time after time and here we, we are it. to the fantastic Grand Central Terminal the famous ceiling these windows along the side here are the windows in which the light used to I'm totally confused by this because they are the north and south windows 
and uh, the grid thing goes from the east and west, so I don't know, this whole thing might be just bogus. You can figure that out for yourself. See those giant windows over there? That's west. That's east. That's south. It's all very nice. And there are other windows up there where the light streamed in in the afternoon, presumably. These windows up here, you used to be able to get inside and walk across. I'm going to see if I can do that right now. I just kind of came upon that myself from the years ago, store. like 20 Actually, years ago. Actually, there used to be a restaurant, and I shot a film in this part of the Grand Central Station, which was never released in the restaurant part. Anyway, there's a little bit of light coming through the window here, sunlight. I don't think that's enough to bring a ghost back, though. I was acting in that film. It wasn't my movie. So, Grand Central Terminal is a mobster, beautiful. actually. And these are the windows that I wanted to go up You see the plexiglass between, walkways. See, there's a passage, walkways between these windows. You can see the uh, plexiglass walkways. And uh, back in the day, you used to be able to go up in these windows. I was wearing a jacket, and I think the mic Over, uh, Grand Central got Station, a little behind the jacket, but, uh, making I it muffled sounding. Over that way and tried to get in, the Apple Store security said, no, 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 you can't go up there. You can't. So anyway, I guess it's not accessible anymore, and that's too bad because it's a lovely view. I have photos of myself up there somewhere. In the past, this is the archway that the uh, whispering. apparently has the whispering thing going on. It's cool archway. So in that corner over there, or in this corner here, apparently one can whisper. And there were some people there earlier, and I asked them, and on the, other side. the woman said, yes, I can hear the whispering. So apparently it actually works. They claim it is. So, it's down here. A lower, lower level. I was hoping I'd find Let's something great see. down there, at least a Homeland Security agent or something. So, of course, Joe and the novel worked here, so he... Uh, had access to everything. Oh, this is the uh, train tracks. This is, uh, actually, I think these are the LIRR. Metro North, maybe, some commuter train. Yeah, anyway, these are the commuter trains. Down here. Where are the subway trains? Look like them. The end of the tracks like have these little trains. bumper things. So the train doesn't come and run over where I am right here. Like in Hugo, see Hugo? There's a big shot in the Hugo where the train comes roaring into the station. We're walking Paris. upstairs footage as well. And uh, blast through everything. I saw to keep the folks interested. In 3D. Oh yeah, I really like this. Uh, this is the door of way out um, at Vanderbilt Avenue and 42nd Street. We'll see an exterior shot in a minute. And wrap up the little video. So, Time After Time by Lisa Grinwald. Grunwald? I never get the name right. It's good. Bye, all.